everyone. Today, we are finally talking about fader priorities. When we first released Blackout 2.0, Jeff did a great walkthrough about all the fader settings and how fader priorities work. I'm making this video as kind of a quick guide with some examples as a refresher. So today is all about priority, and faders aren't the only thing that has priority in Blackout. As you can see from this chart here on screen, this is the hierarchy in Blackout. So as you go up the scale, the things at the top will win over the things at the bottom. It's not super essential to have this memorized, especially for most film workflows, but you can download this image from the link in the description off our user manual, or if you're really crazy, you could add it to your live plot. So now I want to explain the setup I have. I have a Helios tube here divided into a left side and a right side, and I have those on faders. So I can fade the left side up and then come to this fader and fade the right side up. You'll also notice I have doubles of each fader. This isn't really something you would do in practice, but I'm doing this to make the examples really clear. So to change fader priorities, you take your finger and you tap and hold right on the label part of the fader and the whole fader configuration comes up. The fader priorities can be changed by selecting these buttons below the parameter. Just a quick note, I don't want to get too deep into fader settings here, but I have additive turned off for this example. Additive is exactly what it sounds like. It means, let's say I have one fader at 23%. If I move this other fader controlling the same thing, it's not going to jump it down to 7, instead it's going to add to that already existing 23%. Blackout keeps this on by default to help you with smooth transitions, but for these examples, I'll keep additive off so it's really obvious what's going on. We're going to be using faders that are just tied to each half of this Helios tube. All of these priorities work the same on sequence faders. Just as you know, multiple sequences are a little bit more complicated, and I wanted to keep this video simple. Check out my series on working with multiple sequences to get started in that, and then you can start using priorities with sequences. The first priority setting is LTP, which stands for Latest Takes Precedence. And I'm going to stop everything right here and say this is the fader priority you want to be in 90% of the time. Seriously, keep everything in LTP, you're going to be fine. Okay, that's a little hyperbolic, but let's talk about what LTP means. LTP stands for Latest Takes Precedence, and this means whatever you move next is going to take precedence. And this is really what you want with faders. Again, we're thinking about faders as a handle to grab a light out of context. You already have your looks built, but you just need to squeeze that eye light up. You usually want your faders to just take over as soon as you start moving them. So I'm going to take this first left fader and move it up. You can see the light dims up. Now, if I take the one next to it and start moving it, it takes over. That's all LTP is. If I go back to the other one now, you'll see it takes over. So you can see the faders are switching off which one's grayed out, which one's active, based on whichever one I move last. I'll take this one, it takes over. I'll take this one, it takes over. LTP, latest takes precedence. This is the priority you'll mostly want to sit in because this is what makes sense for faders. I just want to grab it and it works. Okay, moving right along on that chart, let's check out high priority. Like I said, 90% of the time I'm in LTP, but there are a few occasions where these other priorities really help. So the best way to think about high priority is it always takes priority over LTP. That's it. So if you have a bunch of LTP faders going on and you know that you have one handle on your board that when you grab it, you want it to always win, that's a case where you might want to set it to high. And I can see the priorities right here on the fader themselves. So if I take this LTP fader and move it to around 11, now if I take this high priority fader and I drag it to right below that, you can see the Titan tube instantly snaps and follows that fader. And now I can dim it up. And even if I go back to this LTP fader, nothing will happen. I can even try to turn it on right now and it won't turn on because this high priority fader is active. So again, this is where fader priorities can actually mess you up because you can be in a circumstance where you need to grab a fader and it's not working all of a sudden. And that might be because you have a fader at a higher priority that's winning and it's on another page and you forgot about it. This high fader is only locking out the LTP fader affecting the same part of the tube. So I can't use this LTP fader that's affecting the left part of the tube, but if I go ahead and turn on the right side of the tube, I can do that just fine because that fader is targeting something totally different. I personally find that I use high priority faders more with sequences. 
If I have a set that has lights being brought in and out of it, and I know I just want to keep that set on, but I have a couple other sequences in LTP, or I have a sequence running in effect, I might put that on high just so I know none of my LTP faders will turn it off. Let's check out another priority. I'm going to press and hold on the label and then switch these faders both to HTP. This stands for highest takes precedence. This type of priority comes from rock and roll boards back in the day where you really want that additive smooth transition. And here we have two HTP faders. So now I'll take the first one and move it to about, I don't know, 30% or so. And then I'll take the other one and move it around below that. You can see it turns on, but nothing's really happening until I go above where the other one is. Highest takes precedence. And now if I take the other one and leapfrog above that, you can see now that one's winning. And now if I go down to zero, it just turns off and the higher one takes precedence. So just like the name implies, whichever fader is higher is going to take precedence. This is unlike LTP, where it's whichever one you moved last. So let's contrast that with latest takes precedence with the right side of the tube. I have my fader here set to 37, and I move this LTP fader here, it jumps down to 9. That's very different than the effect we get with a highest takes precedence fader, where if I set this to around 30% and I start moving it, nothing happens until I go above. So again, HTP came from rock and roll shows where you want that additive transition. The next one is super, and I think it's really important to see where that one sits on the chart. You'll see that a super fader not only has priority over LTP, high, and HTP, but it also has priority over the command line. And to me, that's the key reason why I would use a super fader. The example I can think of for a super fader is, let's say I have a rat pack of 10 dimmers and I have something important plugged into one of the dimmers and I don't want to accidentally turn it off. I might just create a super fader for that channel, leave it at 100, and no matter what I type into the command line, I'm not going to accidentally bring it down. So to show this off, if I press and hold on this left side, and change this to a super, and I'll bring it around 15% or so. Now, no matter what I do with this HTP fader, I can't override it. And now if I go into my fixture view, I can see that this is being controlled by a fader because the pillbox text is in yellow. And now if I try to turn off the left side of the tube by saying at, out, enter, it's not working. So if this is ever happening to you, it's probably because you have a super fader. Again, the reason I said keep everything in LTP is this can be dangerous. There are many times on set where you need to adjust something fast, and if something's not adjusting because you set a super fader on page five and forgot about it, that can be a problem. So I think it's really important to use these sparingly and really intentionally. It's much easier to just have everything in LTP and whatever you do last takes precedence. You could type something like one through home at zero to black out your whole board, but you'll see that's gonna stay on because of the super fader. Okay, last fader type. I said I use LTP the most, and this is the one that I use probably the second most frequently, and that is inhibitive. So let's go ahead and press and hold and change this fader to an inhibitive and save. You'll see my Titan tube turns off and we'll explain why in a second, but inhibitive faders are all about setting a ceiling. This is so helpful if you have battery units like Titan tubes or Helios tubes and you want to use them on max mode, but you don't want them to go above a certain brightness. It's also super helpful if you have a high wattage unit sharing a circuit and you don't want that Vortex 8 going above 75%. An inhibitive fader sets an absolute limit for a light. It doesn't actually dim up and down the light like we've been seeing with the other faders. So if I take this inhibitive fader now and I bring it to about 65%, you can see that I can still use my other fader and I can bring it all the way to 100, but this light isn't going above that. So if I go to my fixture view, I can actually see that it's stuck at 64% and blackout even gives me this exclamation mark to tell me I have an inhibitive fader. And if I start bringing that inhibitive fader down, you can see that even though I didn't change my HTP fader, the inhibitive fader is setting the ceiling for that light. Right now, because I have this inhibitive fader at 23%, I'm saying that whatever is targeted by this fader can't go above 23%. And again, if I go to fixture view, I see that I'm at 23%. So I can use the whole range of this HTP fader, but again, I'm only ever going to 23%. If I turn this off, you can see the same is true of the command line. I see my little exclamation mark saying, hey, there's an inhibitor for this fixture. And if I select this and say full, 
The command line works, but it stops at 23%. So this is definitely really useful in film where sometimes we're sharing circuits or we have battery units and we just wanna set ceilings for things. I'll just quickly mention that if I press and hold and look at the settings, I have this relative mode. This is really helpful for effects. I'm not gonna explain it right here, but I'll put a link to a video where I do talk about relative inhibitive faders. Definitely check that out if you're curious. Okay, I knew this video wasn't gonna be brief, but I wanted to try to simplify what is kind of an advanced concept. The best way to get comfortable with faders is play around with them and use them. Grab a light, use one of my capture presentation files, and play around with it on your own. Please let me know in the comments if this was helpful and what other videos you'd like to see. Let me know how you're using faders and I'll see you in the next one.